Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth and we're going to get into the second half of uh, part three here of section 6.5 and talking about applications to linear inequalities. In the uh, first video here, I solved problems one through three here. Okay, we talked about all sorts of situations here and went through how to apply your techniques of linear inequalities. And so in this video here in part two, I want to continue and solve problems four, five, and six. So get your red pen, highlighters, straight edges out, and get ready to go. So here we go. Number four, the Great Oak High School soccer team is trying to raise money for new uniforms. They are selling candy bars for, oh, this is supposed to be two bucks. All right. $2 each and candles for $4 each. That's a dollar sign, okay? Uh, the team must raise at least, at least $800. So that's, there's your inequality right there. At least means greater than, all right, or equal to 800. So the keyword's at least. That's how you interpret that. That tells you that you have an inequality versus an equality. The question is, uh, how many candy bars and candles should they sell? Okay, so how many candy bars and candles should they sell? How many candy bars and candles should they sell to complete their goal? So put that question in right there, okay? Because I should have typed it in. Okay, so let's determine that. So question is how many candy bars so let's call candy bars uh, X and candles let's use the variable Y for those guys okay so X is the number of candy bars number of candy bars Y is going to be the number of candles because the question is is how many should they sell of each right well we know that for the uh, the candy bars they sell for two dollars each so candy bars Two bucks. This is a dollar sign now. Let's remember that's a typo right there. So let's put that in red. So two dollars per candy bar. And for candles, <clears throat> well, it says right here, four dollars each. So four dollars per candle. All right. We got to write a linear inequality, just like all the other ones right here, to represent the income from selling the candy bars and the candles. So we know that uh, for one bar, it's one times two or two dollars. For two bars, it's two times two or four dollars. Three bars is three times two or six dollars. And so for X bars, it's X times two or two X uh, dollars. So what we want to do here is the team must raise at least eight hundred dollars. OK, so we're going to get money from the bars or the candy. So money from the candy uh, bars plus the money from the candles. All right, that's got to be at least 800 bucks, so greater than or equal to 800. So as I said earlier here, we're going to have 2x dollars for coming from the candy bars. So 2 times x plus, for the candles, it's for one candle, you get 4 bucks. Two candles is 2 times 4, 8 bucks. Three candles, 3 times 4 is 12 bucks. So in general, it's y times 4, or that's supposed to be a 4 times four right there or four y dollars okay so we're gonna have four y dollars coming from the candles and that's got to be greater than or equal to 800 well we're gonna have to solve and graph this to figure out what are the possible solutions to this okay and and in a minute here we'll figure out three different solutions but first we got a graph okay so let's add the opposite here and let's solve for y and we get 4y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 800. I'm going to divide both uh, well, all terms by 4. And you get y is greater than or equal to, no need to switch the inequality there because we divided by a positive number, negative 1 half, simplify your fraction, plus 200. All right, the question is how do you graph this because the y intercept is so large. All right, so we're going to have to change the scale. So this is your y-intercept right here, which means we're going to have to change the scale a little bit here. Because you can't count by ones, you can't get up to 200. So what we're going to do, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is if uh, we can count by, let's say, not by tens, tens is not big enough. So the interval here, or the scale, 
uh, has to be something like either 25 or 50 or something like that to get all the way up. So if it's 25, if, the, if I change this to 25, this is 50, 75, all right, 100 here. And that should be good enough. So 4 squares equals uh, 100, so 125. This would be 150. This would be 200, and so on up here. 50, 100, 200. Did I do that right? 125, 150. Yeah, that should that should be good enough. And then okay, so 225, and then 250. All right. So if we do that here, so this one here, so this is 25. This is 50, 100. 125, 150 here, 175, 200 here, scale this graph here, and then here, this is 250 and so on. So you scale the graph here first, this is the x-axis and the y-axis up top here, and then you have to plot at 200, you got to start here, the y-intercept is 0, 200. There's your y-intercept. The question is, how do you handle the slope, because the slope's negative 1 half. So let's talk about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the slope to something that makes sense according to my scale here. So I'm going to, uh, I can multiply it by 25. Look at the scale right here. This is 25. So if I do that times both by 25, look at this. So times 25 over 25, I get negative 25 over 50. So that's down 25, right 50. Or if I want, I can make it even bigger than that. I can times it by 100 over 100 and do it this way, negative 100 divided by 200. So I go down 100, right 200. Okay, so watch this. So down 100, so all the way down here, okay, down 100, and then right 200. All the way right here, okay. So down, this is uh, down negative 100, down and then write 200. Or I can do it in a, using a smaller scale, down 25, write 50, however you want. And then go ahead and draw your line from there. So let's go ahead and draw our line. Okay, there we go. And let's start your graphing here. So take a look at the inequality, right? It's greater than or equal to. So I know right here, just by looking at this, it's going to be a solid boundary line and above because it's greater than as opposed to less than. Okay, so I know it's going to, the solutions are going to exist up here. So let's get your highlighter out and let's indicate that. So here's your solution region. Everything out here. Okay, this is the, what's called the solution region. And let's answer the question. Let's get some possible solutions here. So here we go. I need three. So I got to, uh, let me see, since there's a number of bars and candles, these have got to be whole numbers. Okay? Whole numbers. Which means that they're non negative. That means they got to be positive. So non negative, meaning they can't be negative. So I can pick this as a possible solution right here. Uh, maybe right here. So what is that? So let's go down. This is 75, comma 200. So 75, that's a solution. So 75, comma 200, what in the world does that mean? So 75 candy bars and then 200, oh, candles. That would do the job, okay? And that would provide enough income uh, for the team. What's another one? Well, how about this one right here? So 150 comma 150. So let's do that. So 100 uh, 50 comma 150. So 150 candy bars uh, and 150 candles. You can sell that combination of things and still get enough income. Remember, this is income right here. What's another one? Because it's asked for three, right? How about uh, how about this this one right here? 
So right here, this is 125. So 125, uh, comma 200. That's a solution too. So 125, comma 200. You can sell these these bars and these candles, right? So 125 candy bars, and then 200 uh, candles. These are possible solutions. Possible solutions. All right, to gain enough income. Okay, income meaning money for the team. Okay, now remember, this is a video, right? So if you'd like, you can go back, rewind this, you can go pause and play and go through the video and. Uh, learn how to apply your techniques on inequalities to, si to solve a wide variety of problems, okay? Now listen to it again if you need to, if I go too fast. Okay, number five, what is that about? Okay, yearbook company promises to give the junior class a picnic if they spend at least, ooh, let's highlight this, at least $28,000 on yearbooks and class rings. There's two things going on, yearbooks, class rings. Each yearbook costs $35, so let's, these two are associated. Each class ring is 140 bucks, or the cost. We're talking about cost now. How many yearbooks X and how many class rings Y must the junior class buy to get their picnic? Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to call X the number of yearbooks and Y the number of class rings. Okay, bought. So number of class rings. Okay, so get out your red pen. Let me see. Yearbooks, 35 bucks. That's what it cost. So yearbook, YB. And uh, ring, well, it's more expensive, right? So it's 140 bucks for a ring. Those are the costs associated. Okay? All right, we need to write a linear equality that represents the minimum amount they must spend. A minimum, okay? At least means greater than or equal to 28000 Okay, they have to spend that much money in order to get the picnic. Okay, minimum amount. It means 28000 or more. Okay, or more. That's what minimum means. So let's write an inequality for that. So let me see. We're going to get money from the yearbooks plus money from the rings. And that's got to be a minimum greater than or equal to $28,000. Okay, so for one yearbook, they they charge 35 for two, two times 35, three, three times 35, and then so on, X times 35. You always multiply the amount <clears throat> by the cost in this case. So for the yearbooks, it's going to be 35 times X dollars. For the rings, it's going to be Y times $140, so plus 140Y. That's going to be greater than or equal to $28,000. Okay, now in order to graph this situation, let's get let's solve for y again. Remember, this is a video, so if you need to pause and play, do it, okay? Use the video effectively and go at your own pace. We're going to subtract 35x. And we're going to get 140y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus $28,000. Plus because it's positive. Okay, I need to divide by 140. Ooh, I missed, uh, this is, uh, missed a little something here. This is supposed to be 35x right here. So let's fix that. So minus 35x, a little mistake on my part. So let me fix that. Okay, so after you do that, you get y is greater than or equal to, when you simplify 35 1 40ths, let's see if 1 40 is divisible by 35. So get out your calculator here, and let's, let's use it a little bit. Unless you want to do it by hand, you could do it by hand as well. So check this out. I want to see if I can divide both these numbers by 35. So I'm going to check. 140 divided by 35. 
Oh, it's 4. So this right here, 35 div divided by 35 is 1, so I get negative 1. 140 divided by 35 is 4. So this actually reduced down to 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth that is, times x. And then 28,000 divided by 140, so 28,000. Come on, calculator, catch up. There we go. Let me go back that and fix that. 28,000 divided by 2, no, excuse me, 140. There we go. Is 200. That should make sense because 14 divides into 28 twice. So 14 divides into 2,800 200 times. So 200 here. So there's your y-intercept, and there's your slope. Okay, so the question is, how are we going to change the slope to make it make sense? So, okay, here we go. So the slope is negative 1 fourth. The y-intercept is 200, or 0, 200. So we're going to have to change the scale again. Change the scale. All right. Oh, actually, we don't have to. It's actually changed for me right here, so forget that. All right, so here we go. So we're going to plot at 0, 200. So 0, 200 is right here. There's 200. Make it a little bit bigger here for you. And then the question is, you know, uh, how do you interpret the slope? So we're this interval right here is 50. Right here is 50. Let me write that a little bit more clearly. So this interval on the big grid lines is 50. So what I want to do is change my my slope. So the slope is negative 1 fourth. So if I multiply by 50 50 s, I get negative 50 divided by 200, which means down 50, right 200. This will help me graph, OK? So I go down 50. So from 200 to 150 is down 50, right 200 is right here. So you plot. So you go down 50, right 200. There's using the slope. Down 50, right 200. Down 50, right 200. Down 50, right uh, 200. And you're here. So let's go ahead and graph. Get your straight edge out. Do it correctly. So I use the slope. I start at the y-intercept, and I use my slope, and I graph the line. And now uh, I have to remember you know, where the solutions are. And right here, I can see greater than or equal to. That means that uh, I have a solid boundary line. That means solutions are on the boundary line. And since it's greater than, it, the solutions lie above. OK, so I'm going to graph above. So let's get your highlighter out. And all this area right through here, all right, this is the solution region. OK. And so what we want to do is pick some possible solutions that make sense. So to do that, we have to reread the problem and figure out what, in the, uh, what makes sense. So you got to remember, though, in this problem, the variables are number of yearbooks and number of class rings. So because of that, solutions have to be whole numbers again. All right, positive whole numbers. Whole numbers are positive. So just want to keep that in mind. So uh, let's go down here and let's pick three different solutions. Positive whole numbers. Solutions must be whole numbers. And if you wonder what whole numbers are, well, well, how about 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. Oh, those are whole numbers, right? So let's pick some. So right here, what solution is that? So that's 1, uh, 150, comma, 200. So 150, comma, 200. That's a solution, but what does it mean? So 150, comma, 200. That means I got 150, ooh, what? Okay, so let's go back up top. Remember, X represents yearbooks, and Y represents class rings. So you have to remember that. So yearbooks and then class rings. So this is yearbooks, and this is a ring. So 150 yearbooks, all right, 200 class rings. 
So what's another solution? Well, let's pick another one. How about this one? So what's that? 400 comma 150. So 400 uh, 150. So 400 comma 150. So 400 uh, yearbooks and then 150 class rings. This will generate enough income to gain a picnic. All right, what's another one? How about, how about this one right here? I'm just picking ones at random, by the way. Okay, so this one's 300 comma 300, so 300 of each. That would do the job too. So 300 yearbooks, 300 class rings. So what do we have? So 300 yearbooks, 300 rings. So you got to explain your answers here, guys. Uh, that is based upon the situation. And you have to understand that sometimes the solutions can't be negative. Sometimes the solutions can't be fractional. So uh, this important point, I'm highlighting it, must be whole numbers is important based upon the context of the problem. Okay, and that right there is problem number five, okay, the yearbook problem. All right, that actually right there is a real problem taken from a real school. I forget which school, but that was real, okay? All right, number six. Let's take a look at number six. What's happening here? A phone company charges a dollar per minute, excuse me, 10 cents per minute for a domestic call. All right, so 10 cents per minute on domestic call and four, four cents per text. Okay, four cents per text right here. Suppose your budget only allows you to spend $20 per month. Okay, $20 per month or less. Okay, or less. So that's less than or equal to 20. There's your inequality right there. Okay. So what we have to do is define our variables here. The question is how many minutes and how many texts can you uh, can you use? So let's write down the question. So how many how many minutes okay and how many texts can you um, uh, can you use let's say okay question mark so let me define my variables I'm going to call X number of minutes and Y is the number of texts okay I should have put the question in there I don't know why I didn't do that so um, we're going to define the unknowns as following so how many minutes X is going to be number of minutes you can use or that you use and why is the number of texts that you that you make so number of texts all right uh, let's take out your red panel let's outline this it costs uh, 10 cents per minute so 0 0.10 per minute and for a text it's four cents per text so four cents 0 0.04 0 0.04 cents per text so what's going to happen here is that the money uh, from that you spend on the minutes, okay, time, money on the time plus the money that you or the, from the text that you are making, all right, has to be less than or equal to twenty because you can't spend more than twenty bucks. That's your budget, okay. Your budget's only twenty bucks, so you can't spend more than your budget. Okay, so the question is, you know, how much money comes from the number of minutes? Well, for one minute, it's 10 cents. From two minutes, two times that. For three minutes, three times that. For X minutes, is X times the cost. Okay, so we have 10 cents times the number of minutes here. And then text, well, for one text, it costs four cents. For two, it's two times that. For three, it's three times that. But in general, it's Y times the cost. So we have uh, four cents times the number of texts you make, and that's going to be less than or equal to twenty bucks. Because guess what? That's your budget. You don't have more than twenty dollars per month. Maybe that's your allowance. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I give my son allowance. You know, twenty uh, twenty bucks per week if he does all his chores all and all his homework. Okay, and then he gets eighty bucks per month. So I don't know what yours is, but that's what mine is. Okay, for my son. So the question is, how do you handle this? So let's let's go for it. Let's do the same thing. Let's subtract uh, 0.10x on both sides, and let's isolate y. 
and you get 0.04y is less than or equal to 0 0.01, excuse me, negative 0.01x plus 20 because it's positive. We're going to divide by the coefficient as we always do. Get your calculators ready because we're going to use them a little bit here to make the arithmetic a little bit easier. All right, and what do we have? Well, we have y is less than or equal to 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.04. That's 0.25, okay? Which makes sense. If I shift the decimals right both places, uh, right two places on both the numerator and denominator here, I get one fourth, which is a quarter, by the way. In fact, you know what? Let me let me do that, okay? So you shift right two places, shift right two places. That's in a sense, by the way, multiplying both by 100, and you get negative uh, one fourth right here. Okay, watch this. Let me go back to the calculator. One divided by four, which is one fourth, equals 0.25. It's the same thing. So you get negative one fourth x, and then 20 divided by 0 0.04. Okay, you get 500, so plus 500. That's why I changed the scale on the graph here, because here's your slope and here's your y-intercept, and you got to plot your y-intercept first. So you're going to plot it up here at 500, and then uh, notice the scale right here between the major grid lines right here is 50. So I'm going to take my slope, which is negative one-fourth, I'm going to multiply it by 50, over 50 and get negative 50 divided by 200, which means down 50, right 200. So, sorry about that. Okay, so let's get back into it here. So from the y-intercept here at 500, uh, we're going to count down 50, right 200. So down 50, which is right here, right here, down 50. Right here, minus 50, right 200. And so that's 0, 50, that's 4 squares, so no, 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 no. Right there, there is right 200. And so you plot a line. So let me see if I did that right. Uh, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Let me pause the video here. Did I... Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. Let me fix it. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to change here. I, I'm i dyslexic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fix this here real quick. So it's okay. Right here should be 0 0.10. <laughs> 10 cents, not 1 cent. So I need to change some things here. I apologize. So this is 10 cents here, and this is going to change here. So all this is going to change, but no big deal. This may happen to you, right? So if it does, well, then you fix it. So this is 10 cents divided by 4 cents. So let me change this. I move the decimal place here, and you get 10 fourths. All right, and 10 fourths here is 5 halves. Okay, so you move the decimal over two places to the right, and you get 10 fourths, but 10 fourths is 5 halves, so you get negative 5 halves here. That's your slope. Aha. Okay, if you don't believe me, let's redo it on the calculator. 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.04. All right, you get 2.5, which is 5 halves. Okay, 5 divided by 2 is 5 halves. Okay, or 2.5. But I'm going to write it as negative 5 halves because I have slope here. So since my slope is negative 5 halves, I want to multiply it by 50 50 -ths. I get uh, negative 250 divided by uh, 100 here. So I got to change this. Okay, so let me fix things here. Okay, so I got to go down 250 and write 200. So down 250. So 50, 100, 150, 200. There's down 250 right here. So down 250, write 100. Plot point here. Down 250, write 100. So there's my, there we go. Now it's correct. So let's graph our line. All right, so looking at the inequality right here, I know by looking at it that it's going to be solid and below. 
So I'm going to keep it solid and graph my solutions below. No, 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 no. So this entire area right here is my solution region. Okay. And what I need to do now is pick three solutions that is that are possible. Okay. Keep in mind that we got minutes first and then text. So let's pick a possible solution right here. Here's one of them right here. So what is that? Well, so it's 200 and this is 50. So two, excuse me, 50 comma 200. 50 comma 200 is a solution. Come on, Ainsworth. Let me write more clearly here. So 50 comma 200. What does that mean? So these are uh, minutes and these are texts. Okay, so 50 minutes. All right, and 200 texts. That will stay, then I'll stay in my budget. Another one could be this one right here at 150 or 100 comma 150. So 100 comma 150, what does that mean? It means 100 minutes in terms of calls and 150 texts and then I'll stay in budget. And maybe this one right here. This is 150 comma 100. So 150 comma 100. What does that mean? So 150 comma 100 means 150 minutes. All right, and 100 texts, and then I'll stay in budget. So we've got some possible solutions right here, and according to the problem. And I apologize for making a little mistake in there because I'm dyslexic. I get things backwards sometimes, but I noticed it, and I fixed it. You saw me correct it. And, uh, and that's good for you to see sometimes because guess what? You make mistakes too, and you got to learn how to fix them. So uh, no problem there. So once again, this is solutions and uh, to the, all the six problems here on the applications of your linear uh, inequalities. And like I said, this, these are videos here. So if you need to go back to number one and review it, do it. Use the technology to your advantage, and I'll see you in my next lesson. This is Mr. Ainsworth. I'll see you. Bye-bye.